we are live now you okay. can start okay so first of all uh, good evening everyone all the audience uh, i would say this time uh, across the globe because uh, right now i am in dubai and i am having my guest my 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 close friend and an old colleague mr amit bhakri welcome to this program amit thank you thank you arun pleasure to see you at a very different platform yeah i know it's been a very different platform we have been together uh, for the audience i must say that you know i and amit have been associated for almost uh, maybe more than two decades that we know each other very well and i was really excited to host him today so so wherever you are and you are watching this program i must say that today is going to be a lot of learning and as well as a lot of fun that we are going to bring on this uh, topic evaluating the performance the right way so before we really get into the topic before we really get into everything in terms of what's the core part of it i want amit uh, it's your turn i want you to tell people who you are what you do and something that people generally don't know about you i think this forum is is deserving that we should <laughs> No, first of all, again, Arun, thank you so much. I think it's a sheer pleasure and privilege also to 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 hold this discussion in this platform. As I said earlier, I mean, we met almost two and a half decades before. Those of you who do not know either me or Arun, we were we were FLSMs together. We became SLSMs together and SLSM SLSMs in the same zone, and then of course the diversification happened. I continued to be in the industry, and Arun. Today is an entrepreneur, and today sitting in in, in not not only in India but sitting in Dubai and trying to set up a, a lot of entrepreneurship. I think so. First of all, Arun, big congratulations to you and to the HCN of what you have uh, achieved. Thank you. So I have a, almost around twenty nine years of career now. Arun knows that, and 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 out of that twenty eight and a half years in in one organization, which is AstraZeneca, which is amazing and amusing both, and and probably during the course of this session, Arun. <laughs> We'll continue to dwell on it that how how our performance and engagement helps individual to stick on to an organization and probably mm -hmm. I might be a if not a great example but a okay kind of an example. <laughs> I I started as a sales rep like Arun did and then did multiple roles multiple geographies and currently I I had the biopharmaceutical business of AstraZeneca uh, based out of Bangalore and I think it has been a pretty enriching career from a sales rep to a a uh, uh, business unit director of BBO, I think, is pretty accomplishing, and I think a lot of learning, which probably some of that uh, I, I'm going to share with you. Uh, on a personal front, happily married, two kids, uh, stay in Bangalore, basically a Delhi I born, born, brought up, nurtured, a bit of spoiled, as I always say in Delhi. <laughs> but then I think these last decades again have been a great learning coming. Yeah. Oh, I'm a I'm a sports freak and fan. I I still play tennis and badminton. Uh, like many of you, uh, I am a binge watcher. I mean, with all those technology, and probably we will talk a bit about it today. With everything at your at your remote, uh, I think it's it's also a great to watch uh, sometimes on the weekends. Uh, and I do have got my choices there on both Netflix, Prime, and you name a 
platform and I am there. So that's about me, Arun. We can continue to talk about it, but maybe <laughs> let's come to the topic. So one thing good has happened that in 20 years, I was not knowing that you play badminton. So I think we deserve to play some time <laughs> because I also love badminton a lot. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Let's hope we do that. Okay, guys. So let's uh, move into our uh, topic of discussion. And I'm sure uh, if all of you who have watched the poster that we gave before, it is evaluating the performance the right way. So Amit, uh, my first question to you, very simple. You know, when I say simple, because I know I gave you a couple of topics to choose from. And then you said, Arun, I want to speak on this performance. So, <laughs> so I don't know why you chose that. Only you know. So you tell us that why you chose that. Because I always ask the speaker here. And then what performance means? <laughs> no, no, Arun. All topics were great. I chose performance because it's a it's a it's a time when we are evaluating performance. I mean, first quarter usually uh, in most of the I MNC, mean, it's Jan to December, but then in many organizations across the industry, first quarter is the time when you look at your annual performance and a lot of appraisal happen. I thought we can probably have some kind of a spicy discussion over this chat and 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 probably also evoke. I don't know whether we'll be able to hear comments from the viewers here or not, but that's okay. At least we, me and you. Both can have a talk. And that's the only reason I don't uh, I chose this topic. So, so as you asked, I think performance, I'll I'll talk a little broader and then probably try to come closer home in, in terms of crystallizing it. Performance to me is about encapsulating the effectiveness and efficiency. I think two words: effectiveness and efficiency, which can be a task, activity or role and how it is executed. So it can be, a, it's about bringing that whole element of effectiveness and uh, efficiency into any of the, and I'll give you an example. I mean, why are we talking performance from a marketing sales uh, uh, standpoint? You you go to a movie and you say, wow, the performance was good. No, the performance was mediocre. So, so, you, so you try to look at, and what really goes beyond a mere completion, I don't know, of, of any of these tasks or activity is quality, consistency, and more importantly, I think, impact. These are these are the key ingredients. So quality, consistency, and impact. I'll try to ice it up by also saying, most critical, I think, in today's era, and I'm sure everyone will vouch, is, is how ethical you are uh, in terms of accomplishing that task. Now, now, bringing a little more practicality, Arun. Performance is about achieving objective, meeting or exceeding expectation, or or continuously striving for an improvement. I think these are some of the things which we, we have learned now over a period of time. Now, what does it involve? It involves demonstrating competence, delivering results. I'll also add an element which probably many a times, I won't say we forget, but it's not enough, means which is about adapting to challenges and resilience and showing that agility. And why do I say that? Arun, 26, 27 years before when I entered the industry, no one was talking about digital. No one was talking about innovation. No one was even, as a rep, I wasn't even aware about what is my market share. So that adaptation to the changing environment, I think to me, again, is something which is very, very important. Two more elements, Arun, and then probably I'll seek uh, your reflections. Where do you put productivity? Where do you put innovation? Where do you put teamwork? I think I would all put it under the performance. Because this is what is going to positively influence and, and give you an outcome. So to me, if you have to summarize everything that I said, and in case if uh, it becomes a little clutter, I think I would say three Cs, which is the ultimate performance is a reflection of one's three Cs. Your capability, your commitment, and your contribution. I'll pause with that, Arun, and probably have your reflection. Yeah, Amit, I think uh, I think you covered a lot uh, in terms of I think you have not left anything for me to add. But I think what you said very rightly, uh, you talked about <laughs> agility, adaptability, and how it came because of the changing environment. I think that is what is happening constantly. And without that agility and adaptability, if you are not, then either you are obsolete or you are thrown away from the marketplace. So that means performance will only come, as you said, with these factors coming in, in total, uh, if suppose somebody is able to reflect it, and that's where you know the productivity comes. So 
So now I understand why performance was your close to your heart in in terms <laughs> of in terms of uh, taking that topic. And I think that's very crucial because I think we are all evaluated on the performance criteria, uh, and and not just numbers. I'm sure we are going to talk more exactly. on that. It's not just numbers. That's what we say: performance versus potential. And that's where a uh, lot of high performers they miss out that you know why they are in spite of performance they are not moving. So performance becomes the criteria, but again, there are various angles to performance. And that brings to my second question, that what to evaluate in a performance when we say about, you, you touched, touched on quality, you touched on efficacy, you, uh, efficiency, effectiveness, but still, can you go a little more deeper and finer in terms of what to evaluate in performance and, and why also, to, and to repeat the what you said. Sure. In this part. Yeah, man. So, uh, again, I, don't, I wouldn't be prescriptive because I'm sure the audience whom we are talking to are also uh, equally uh, educated, equally aware and equally competent. But but I'll, I'll tell you what I do and what I want to do as well. Both both the things that there are certain things which I might not be doing to, to the perfection. First thing is, Arun, goals achievement. Now, assess whether the individual or team has met their predefined goals and objectives. Mm -hmm. So you can only assess if and only when you have got a very clear predefined objectives at the beginning of the year, be it mm -hmm. any function. Now, now this can be clearly measured by comparing actual results against a set target. I think that's something which is a fundamental to any any of the evaluation performance. Mm -hmm. Two, I also want to, so so for example, Arun, you can have a sales and non-sales parameter, and you and me have grown into the world where where there were non-sales parameters, there were SFE parameters. Marketers were, were supposed to look at how are, is the adoption curve moving, how is the market share improving, and then growth. So mm. these are these are all can be put into the goals. Mm. But I think one of the things that I found very challenging and, and, and we really are working on it, but have improved, is about quality of work. Now, how do you get this angle to evaluate the standard of work that you have produced? Mm. Third, how about timelines? Mm. So, will you access whether the task or projects that were, do, were done were completed within the uh, agreed timeline, punctuality in meetings, milestones, turnaround? And I'll give you a very small example of the industry, hmm. which I also battle to, of, of both quality and timelines. Now, now, you are supposed to, and I'll give you a very simple, plain vanilla sales example for which you and me were apart for almost 10, 10 years. Now, you have a target to accomplish and you are month on month achieving the target, but your 60% of the sales happen on last three days of the month. Now, how will you evaluate it? Because the, the, the geography or the region or, or the rep, or even I am at, at bank 100%. So, so I think these are the things, Arun, that we really need to really look forward for. Uh, there are two more elements around that I, I personally believe we should bring in, which were not there again at a time that when you and me entered innovation and initiative. Mm -hmm. Something new that now are we bringing to evaluate the individual's performance. What are the new ideas that are being generated? Hmm. I'll also give you an example of something that we are now beginning to hear a lot, which we never heard. Access. Market access. How do you get an access? It's not about only one function. But it's about every individual who is working into a, a geography. How do you get the access to more and more patients? And I'm giving an example of the healthcare industry, Arun, and our job is to, is to make a meaningful difference to the patient. So how do you evaluate the performance in terms of bringing that access? Hmm. I think last but not the least is about <clears throat> teamwork. How, how do you bring teamwork and collaboration? And I think these are all some of the things uh, which you can easily put into the goal. Two things which will encompass everything is, again, ethical conduct and professionalism. There are organizations which will specifically put into their performance evaluation the ethical conduct and professionalism. And I think which is very, very important. And today we are talking about how do you ethically lead uh, uh, not only in the company, but in the industry. And last is about how do you give the feedback? I mean, which to me is simple. How do you give a feedback, periodicity of the discussions, but I'll pause here and, and probably try to see in case if you have anything else to add. Yeah, Amit, very rightly said, I think you touched on something, uh, the basis of the whole thing, and that is goal setting. I think uh, a lot of time I have seen with what you just touched upon that a lot of leaders, 
uh, they talk about goal setting and you go to any seminar, any leadership program, they talk about goal. But a lot of people, they do not pay that attention to that. They say that, okay, it's a statement, it's a wishful statement, or it's a, it's a great statement to have it. But how many of them really follow that? So, but then, uh, as you rightly said, uh, going by the growth drivers, going by the timelines and the discipline to follow that. But something I want to still touch on one area where you said about innovation and initiative, as you mentioned about these two eyes that are getting uh, encouraged in performance evaluation, right? So I still see that uh, a lot of time people talk, but is there a way in your experience or in your practice that this is really getting measured and rewarded as well, or it is more observed in the form of a feedback? No, no, you, you are right. I also won't brag a lot about it. But, but but at least I'll tell you, things have started, we are thinking towards that direction. There are many organizations which will be very evolved. And no, everyone can't be doing an innovation also. Let's also be very, very clear about that. There are different layers of, of people where you expect. If if the layer from which you do not expect, Arun, they do, it's, it's great. But why not? For example, there is a senior management level or a mid-management level where you want and you are, are struggling with creativity. It's not the marketing job or, or it's not the head office job always to, to bring that innovation live. And, and there are some ideas I can tell you which we implemented in AstraZeneca which came right from a field. Uh, there, there was one big project that we started uh, uh, which was like a very frugal innovation I would say but the idea came from a sales rep in Mumbai. Okay. And we scaled it up that today it became a big craze in, in not only in AstraZeneca, but the industry also copied it. So, yeah. so the point I'm trying to make is there is no harm in case if you, there was a point of time that to my all direct reports, I, I, I said that please at least put in your objective that you will start with a new, and innovation is not, I mean, it's a big word and it really confuses people. Care innovation is about like uh, inventing something which is very, I think you start, doing things slightly differently where you make a meaningful impact. That to me defines an innovation. So something that Arun, I have not been able to do in last three, four years, but I start doing it and probably it will change the way the impact has been made. So so, so to me, I think why not to put into an objective? At least and then evaluate after uh, three months, six months, whatever is your periodicity of evaluating that where are, at, at least it will give you a conscious way, because if it is a part of an objective, you will also think, yeah, I haven't done anything creative. Let me try. Maybe a small thing. Yeah, I, I get that, Amit. I think uh, that's, again, uh, I, uh, reminding me of one question that I normally ask people in the interview, and I have been asked in the past, that have you done anything in your organization or in your tenure in your organization which has contributed to the success as an innovative thing. So if that is getting encouraged at your place, as you're mentioning, then I would say that is all about the manager and the leader's role to give that kind of an environment and then people prosper. Very well said. Now that brings me another yeah. question and this is more towards the young leaders. I know you have talked about what you do in terms of your evaluating performance with respect to goal settings, initiatives and drives, ethical behaviors, uh, personal development. But tell me like if, a leader is watching you right now, maybe a young or a mature leader, whomsoever is watching this right now. Tell me, what will you recommend if he or she has to do a performance evaluation? What are the parameters? What are the things that they should look at it? Some light if you can throw for them to understand and practice it from your experience. Sure. No, I, 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 I was anticipating that you would probably segue into the how part that what what is what we define, but how do we evaluate? So, Arun, <coughs> as we are moving more and more and becoming more digital, more techno savvy, I, I'll give you two, three elements which have been traditionally there and still continues to hold a merit. Uh, and then there are a lot of new things which have now come, which will help all managers to evaluate the, the performance. I will start with the simple business review, monthly KPI key performance indicator, good old term that we continue to use. So establish specific matrices to the KPIs to measure performance in the key area which you want to track. I mean, every 
one I'm sure is doing that. I, I want to really tell people here, many a times I, I myself struggle with the time that one day or one and a half, I don't want to be prescriptive here again, but I think spend time in, in monthly uh, review processes because reviews are again, nothing but your key KPIs, uh, uh, milestone, and then you can always cause correction. Two is, Arun, about the whole performance appraisals. The performance appraisals have now dramatically changed. I'll give you my own example of the organization. We now have something which I regarded as the best practice. I, I'm not very sure, though the other companies are doing it. If they are doing it, great. But I'll give you an example of performance appraisal used to be once in a year process. Everyone used to wait. Wow, today is the day I will be speaking. Today, we, we have moved into check-ins. We don't call it as appraisal anymore. Again, it's not about terminology, but it's about the way you want to have those discussions with your employees and we do it quarterly check-ins. These are formal, formal discussions with you. And again, based upon the objective setting that you had set in the beginning of the year. So, so I will encourage those who have not yet migrated to it, again, not getting prescriptive, just ensure that every quarter you have those formal evaluation, which will help to make sure that you give a feed forward. We don't even call now a feed back, but we say a, a feed forward so that you are able to understand each other, the expectation and based on the objective. Two, three things come to my mind, which of course I will say that I have also not been doing it, but I think there are these are things and I was reading few of some articles. 360 degree feedback. Now, how often we do that? In fact, I I get a lot of, so for example, I don't know if you work in, in, in two different functions and I'm, uh, at a corporate office, you have got finance, you've got HR, you've got legal and, and multiple functions. Now, now people send me and, and they have business partners in their function. They report to them, but they work very closely with them. No harm in, in gathering a feedback about them. And similar goes to, to, to our employees. Mm -hmm. Can, we, can yeah. we do that? And it's not something which is today uh, costing very high. I think one of, one of our very good criteria to evaluate person is to do a 360 degree. Yeah. One of the things that finally I will also want to say is performance matrix and analytics real time can we do that answer is yes are we doing it i don't know and i'll give you an example these are like data driven approaches today i mean tell me how many companies today are not using clm are not using ipads so so it's about to measure the performance quality score customer satisfaction score you can do it real life and i'll give you an example before i hand it over to you you go to decathlon arun and once you are, are able to finish your purchase, there are three icons, smiley, sad. Now, how objective you are in filling it and how objective is the manager or that employer to receive the feedback is a very different issue. But they have a real-time performance evaluation matrix. So we don't have to crazily run for solutioning. And, 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 and we are now today in pharmaceutical industry so proud that me and you used to carry such big Folders and now we are talking about a CLM and real time calls and whatnot. So, but I'll take pause because these are my favorite topics. I can go <laughs> on and on and on, but to have your reflection. Yeah, Amit, I think uh, you gave a very well example of decathlon. And I'm sure uh, I've also seen one thing which has happened is that if you give them low rating, like these days, many good. Uh, uh, automobile manufacturer after the first service or second service, they will give you a call. And I remember I was giving uh, a because of some experience, I was giving a low rating and you won't believe their entire team came to me that why. So that means their performance evaluation was so stringent that they wanted to ensure that nothing goes wrong. And another thing I think that you mentioned is uh, where I think the leaders have to think who are listening to this, that once you do all the hard work of analytics, metrics, and you have a lot of data around you, now, what you do with that? Because if you don't do anything, I mean, the right course corrective action, then uh, that's of no use. So leader also plays a, a very, very important role that after all this, because many a times they go by the textbook, okay, mujhe ye karna hai, mujhe wo karna hai, and then later on they get fumbled up what to do with that. Okay, now I think uh, what you have touched on, I want to move to another part, which is something very close to me and I want to hear from you and I ask, uh, in my one-on-one -on -one discussion with people, I'm sure we are talking about evaluating team performance, right? And I'm sure in every yeah. organization, uh, every HR, every business process has got a performance appraisal model. 
because the increments are decided on that, which means that every manager is trained and given, not trained, I would say, but he, he, he learned from his previous manager that how he was evaluated. So when he become manager, obviously he tries to look at the way that he was evaluated. Now, what I have seen is that no doubt everybody does that, but one piece which is missing is quality. And when that quality piece wow. is missing, you see that the employees feel disengaged, they feel demotivated, and you know the whole charm of that, what you said, that people were excited about performance appraisal, whether it is quarterly or yearly, and the quality is missing. So tell me, what are those finer quality stuff that people can take from your experiences and where they miss? What is the pain areas where they miss quality? Whether they want to do it fast, whether they are in, in, an, in a hurry that somebody will ask them question or challenge them, whatever. I, I leave it to you to now answer on it. Oh, no, no, it's super important, Arun. And, and after so many years of experience, I mean, this is something which we, it's a continuous improvement for. I think you touched upon something and I'll start with preparedness. It's, it's pretty general and then probably I will go a little more deep and talk about three, four components which can derail the whole, whole performance evaluation process. But I think your point is pretty valid, which is about preparedness, not only from an employer standpoint, but from a line manager standpoint, I think preparedness is the key. How, how objectively are you looking at things? How prepared you are? Uh, I mean, have you got all the data? And there are so much of a data, Arun, as I said, today floating, which again might be a part of, of the objectives that you have met. So one of the things where we go wrong, and, and it's not something new that I'm going to tell, but I think this is something we consciously need to, because this is again a time to set up objectives for the year 2024, if not already done. Lack of clear objective and matrices, Arun, is something where organizations clearly fail to establish. I won't say organization, but the managers clearly fail to establish their KPIs. Now, if you don't have a specific goal, specific matrix of what you want to accomplish, it becomes extremely challenging to access the performance accurately. For example, if you have got a very clear defined, you want to increase your market share, you can have a very uh, straight objective you want to increase your market share of product x but which segment what is the class is it is it within within a particular class or, or within a molecule in case if you have got branded generics in that what is the time frame i think so so i think let's let's put some time on 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 bringing those very clear objectives at the beginning of the year i think in case if we do that i think half the problem is solved yeah, to, I mean, uh, yeah. go on. Please go on. Yeah. No, I'm saying second thing. And again, my personal experience, and I grapple with that sometimes, I must confess. Sometimes you also go wrong because you have got limited training and resources. Now, as a manager, are you adequately trained? You have got that skill. You have got those resources. When I say resources, it might be a very basic data of what have your, your, your team accomplished uh, in, in, in that one quarter. Proper guidance. I think these are some of the things which, again, can be a derailing, which is about the right training and right resources to a manager as well. Because we usually think it's an employer's responsibility to come completely prepared and, and be there. That's not the case. I mean, you both have to be equally. One thing more I'll say, probably you wanted to speak and then I'll give you, how do you avoid subjectivity and biases around? This is again something which this can be influenced by your judgment, your past experiences, your favoritism that might lead to an unfair assessment. And, and this can completely undermine the credibility and validity of the process. I won't even bring individuals here because that's something where, where people will be very, very timid. And again, as I said, I think, and I will continue to say that uh, every time you ask me a question, what about feedbacks and communication? Inadequate feedback and communication is something, again, which we, we really, and, and, and we are talking in an era where you have got everything at your hand, Teams to WhatsApp to, to phone call and, and then arranging meetings. So I think lacking in specificity or, or inconsistency, can, can be addressed in case if we are able to have those meaningful feed forwards uh, and communication. Go ahead, Arun. I think, I think, you had a point. 
Yeah, thank you. Very well said. I think you touched on something very important in the last part, particularly when you mentioned about the favoritism, biasness, and that's where you know uh, a lot. A lot of time there is a lot of heartburn amongst employees uh, of a team that you know why X was rated more than me, and then I also did the same hard work. And I think that's where the leader is tested. That's where the vision of that leader, if he is or she is biased it will impact a lot of people. And that's where the quality, as I said, would suffer. And I think another area where I have seen that the companies do a lot of trainings on leadership, on, on performance metrics, and many more areas. But when it comes to training people on how to do appraisals, how to do feedback, I think very, very few companies are really putting that effort. And then eventually, the leader who is doing that uh, work, they feel that they are doing a right job. And that's how they have been treated in the past. So probably I think that's something which you talked about, the matrices, the, the kind of sharpness of your goal is important. And now, Amit, that brings me my next part. I hope you are not tired. <laughs> 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 I can see the energy because uh, for the audience, I must tell you that uh, Amit was not well for the last two days. He has been in a, in a very bad shape because he was hit by a bug. I don't know whether it was a love bug of 14th February. <laughs> 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 or it's a real bug, but I think it's a real bug. I can see he's coughing now. So so thanks, Amit, for being here. I know you are highly committed, and that also speaks about your commitment as a leader uh, to, to follow what you say. So now I think what I want to talk to you about, uh, you talked about some tangible points, right? Like in terms of matrices, in terms of market share, in terms of numbers. There's something which I which is my favorite area because in, in my coaching, I, I look into that, and that is behaviors. So my hmm. question is that on the tangibility, you can say, okay, I am I have done one CR or 100 CRs and, you know, I'm at this. Hmm. this. What about behaviors? Why they are important element of a performance evaluation and how to do that? Can you throw some light on? This is something I also keen to learn and understand. Yeah, yeah. No, no. Very, very important point. And I'll, I'll again give you an example. I'm sure, again, many companies would be doing that. We, we believe in AstraZeneca about what, what have you achieved, how have you achieved, and, and so what, which is the impact, and, and everything that encompasses is a behavior. I think it's a very, very important point, and, and I really also want to touch upon that. I'm so glad that you... Now, you have to first define the desired behavior, which is already predefined in all organizations except the startups which are just setting up. Now, now the behaviors are aligned to the organization values, Arun, to the culture and performance ex expectation. So, for example, we in AstraZeneca has got a predefined values and against every value, we have got a behavior. Now, the only challenge, and I'm not saying for an organization, is that are these behaviors observable? Can you observe someone Exhibiting those behaviors. Because if you can't observe someone exhibiting that behavior, how will you evaluate and how will you measure? Again, great to have uh, the, the behaviors. And, 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 and to repeat, they are based upon the values and what you want to be, how you want to be, which is about values, culture, and performance. But I think to me, the biggest point is how do you observe that? How do you measure them? And how relevant are they in terms of uh, the rules and responsibility? Now, can you develop a specific criteria or indicators for these behavior? My answer is absolutely. These are not now very, very subjective, Arun. And I'll give you some of the examples that we follow. And, and there are certain things that we can really bring live. But again, the uh, criteria should be that they should be actionable. And hence, we are able to demonstrate these behaviors. Now, I'll give you an example. One of our behavior we, we really want to encourage is act with urgency. Now, is it, a, is it a great behavior? Yes, you have to act with urgency because there are patients and you are into a healthcare. Can you evaluate that? Why not? Now, there is a situation where you are able, which demands that you should proactively take a lead rather than being a follower. And you continue to wait for some other person and you do not press the button. How will you evaluate that? Or there is someone who is not into that function. And he says, no, this is a solution that I want to give because there are 
there are patients waiting and it happened with in one of our case during covid time when we were, were really struggling to get a product getting imported from from a port and where we were not able to do there was someone who was from 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 a very different function not from the regular ops function who said no i'll come forward so to me that was something which and that example two and a half years before is still live in my mind because that individual showed that sense of urgency so so i think and again for example respect for individual i mean a very very typical of of, of someone to to how do you how do you exhibit that behavior not by calling someone sir but genuinely respecting that individual and and and, and getting more uh, inclusive about it and respecting the views to me is a respect of an individual so so these are some of the examples around that 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 are very much available only thing is that we need to also be positively reinforcing these behaviors and i'll give you again one in, uh, of an example i mean do we can we recognize people on behaviors we do that in astrazeneca so 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 we rather recognize people not because they have increased a uh, customer adoption or increased market share but there is a special evaluation criteria where there are preset behaviors arun and, and, and all line managers not only line managers you can you can actually reward uh, or recognize for that matter anyone whom you believe is doing the right behaviors because our behaviors are very well defined so if you have a well defined behaviors and if you see someone who is exhibiting them what is the harm in terms of uh, 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 recognizing that person and last is about uh, uh, again i'll i'll talk about uh, is is about learning together and coming together some of, by doing some of the case based studies every month we all senior managers uh, get together and we discuss some of the uh, very typical cases so it's a one line case which is about the whole dilemma that you can be in but the whole purpose is to then evoke responses of 40 50 people how would they react to that and that to us is a cumulative learning in terms of how do we change our aspect and how do we change our behavior i mean thank you for saying that i think uh, as you just mentioned in astrazeneca if people are getting recognized or maybe rewarded or acknowledged on the behavioral part i think that's very well done because uh, why i'm saying so because i read the book of marshall goldsmith a couple of years back and it very clearly mentioned that in organizations particularly sales driven organizations you see on the annual kick off meetings and the annual nsms or the national sales meets people are rewarded for the high performance but i hardly see that anyone has got a behavioral related award and that's what he was mentioning in his book that people who have been negative or they were not like uh, collaborative and they, if they have turn around is that getting rewarded so what i'm trying to say if you are doing it i think that's a good example that industry should learn from this and people like you who are driving it because i also see one more challenge and i don't know what you have to say on it when it comes to behavioral evaluation i'm sure every company has an induction process then basis that they are been reminded very often in the review meetings but a lot of time you know i see people say time nahi hai i don't have time to you know get into that and that's where i would also put the blame to a an extent than the employee equally to the manager whether he is inculcating and he is doing and doing the right walk the talk while he is observing behavior and evaluating people on them anything you want to add on this or you are good with this no but this this will continue to be the struggle in fact i will also be very candid on this forum i got a feedback by my direct reports i am a little miser in terms of also recognizing some of their behavior so that's a struggle around we will always have but i think let's let's take the feedbacks and and let's move forward because see if we don't have time to 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 recognize forget about reward to recognize the right behavior of an organization i mean then it's not right on my part because that's what we breathe in and breathe out as an organization and then what is also very interesting is today most of the companies have got something which is all mechanized and automated for example to for me to formally recognize someone on a behavior i have to go to a system which will ask me five very simple question what behavior was exhibited what was the impact and these are all drop down things what i'm saying is now technology is also helping us you don't have to write lengthy emails you don't have to write no, lengthy, yeah, yeah. yeah 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 it's email. all automated only thing thing is if your behaviors again i am reiterating if your behaviors are 
Well, many a times, you know, Arun, it also takes a lot of time for every employee to also inculcate the behaviors. Because if you have got 20 behaviors, again, I'm not challenging any, any organization, but but the the the, the lower the the best, so that at least then you you know what you are supposed to do in every behavior. So so I think it's a, again something which is an interesting, but as we move forward, Arun, and, and into a, a regulated industry that we are, I think behaviors continue to drive the performance rather than performance rank the behavior. I mean, it's about what comes first, the cart or the horse. I think it's behaviors which which will definitely ensure that you have a good compliant performance. Yeah, very well said. I think my entire coaching work that I do is all on behaviors and that too with senior leaders. But anyways, now since you have ta talked about forward, so let's go into, let's talk about something related to future. And uh, so tell me now from your view, from your window, when you look at five years, 10 years ahead, do you think that the performance evaluation is going to be more tighter, you know, stricter? <laughs> And how this performance management is looking like, because we are entering into machine learning, AI, as you, we just talked about the automation, you have all the click off buttons. So put some light on it. What do you see? What things are happening around you? <laughs> it's a very tricky question. I, I, I'm I, not sure I'll be able to do justice to this question, but it's a very pertinent question, first of all. Okay, how will you, how will the performance evaluation happen? And what? How will performance look like five years down the line with the era that is changing so fast? First of all, I don't think it will become tighter or stricter. It will become more and more objective. Arun. That's what I... Because if I go back again into the era that you and me started and today, has it become stricter? I don't think so. I think we have got tools, we have got matrices, we have got things which are far more clearer so that at least we can have a far more objective discussion rather than very subjective and based only on one or two things. So if it's a 360 degree uh, uh, evaluation of an individual on behavior, on sales, non-sales, on market shares and whatever you want to encompass, I think it's you will get more and more tools I'm telling you Arun to, to evaluate that. You won't even have to wait for one quarter. Probably every day will be your, I won't say performance evaluation, but every day you will be a feedback. So imagine Today, or, today, all our reps are carrying our, uh, a folder. Tomorrow, after five years, how about the AI-generated uh, uh, a score that comes to you based upon the interaction that you have with the doctor and it says you have scored six points because you were able to talk about two clinical trial data. You were able to do a very good discussion. How about a marketeer? If they are able to have a kind of an assessment where they are able... So, so point I'm trying to bring is all these algorithms, all these machine learnings and AI will help you to become a far more better individual. Probably you know, you will require a very less manual intervention there. And today also you will see, Arun, everything comes on a system. This is what you were supposed to deliver. Of course, coaching continues to be manual. I mean, no one can replace the human element of how do you coach person? How do you uh, interact with uh, with your uh, uh, healthcare providers. I think that will continue to be, but but I'm very sure uh, more and more tools. I was giving an example of Decathlon. You 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 detail a product to a to a doctor and then a, a doctor gives you a marks. I know I'm th thinking very, very aloud. Uh, uh, maybe that era will come when, when they will evaluate you there itself. No, yeah, you 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 forgot your key messages. I'll give you I'll give you three. Oh wow, you remember the you remember the trial data like 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 no one no one rap. I'll give you 10. And after 10 calls, you get a cumulative score. I'm saying, why not? If not from a external world, but internally, I think these are some of the things. There are CLM-driven uh, contents which the marketers today receive, and they based on that, they see what is the most important page that, that, that the rep detail. Was it the one they wanted the reps to detail? Because marketer wanted to give some other message. But rep. So, so I think we have already moved towards that stage. And, and I'm sure it will be an exciting world around and We'll continue to discuss that. <laughs> <laughs> well, Amit, I, I think what you said, I, I mean, I, I will add to what you said uh, because uh, what I feel is uh, the tangibility parts will become little completely because it's repetitive. So it's machine is going to learn very fast and it's going to measure, as you said, you know, it will just come with a fraction of button. But what you, what we just talked about it to me, the key, which is going to be the behaviors 
and that is something is going to be the deciding factor for the evaluation of performance of an individual because i don't know because i am out of touch now you are still on the market that how much time today the rep gets to detail to a particular customer i'm i don't know until you have something something which is which is not known to the doctor or the customer for that matter so until you bring that value with bring those behaviors and yeah, then measure yeah, everything yeah. that would be something which because i'll add something and we are talking on linkedin live so i uh, i i recently attended one of the linkedin live forum uh, linkedin forum and they were talking about they have 1 billion people uh, on their network which means one in seven people are on linkedin and then they were talking about the generative ai in their tools that they are selling yeah, yeah, yeah. and one thing which they mentioned is they have been able to do a lot of ai stuff but one thing that they are working on is the emotional intelligence somebody that you have to shortlist at the end so that is something as i said you know the behavior that how an individual is something which is still left and that's why i think you mentioned about the coaching part that you know that will still remain the human connection will remain so how you can sharpen that probably that is important uh, element in the future well amit uh, thank you so much uh, it's been like 45 minutes i think mujhe to pata hi nahi chala how the time has run away <laughs> but uh, i still want to ask you one last thing and that is one thing is anything that you want to leave a message with the young generation uh, people like you and me have seen the era of papers when we used to have the invoices and the and the sheets of the performance and the time that we are all digitalized it's just a click of a button you get tell me something that you want people to to take away from this session today from your end yeah yeah and and by the way i still belong to the young generation I, as i say age is no more a number it's a level i say i am level 50 uh, i think the his, i mean it's about the message that i want to give first of all again big thanks arun i think i enjoyed the talk thoroughly although you threw questions which which probably i did not even anticipate but that's okay i think that's what makes this whole talk a live talk so lively i think one uh, so we talk a lot about performances i think let's let's be very very clear on what performance means to you to the organization and to the team i think that's the fundamental of everything define your performance at the beginning of the year have a clear cut objective have a clear cut kpi to measure those objectives and don't feel shy of of communicating and discussing with your teammates i won't give you a frequency but the more the better that there is no nothing i i usually use this word over communication i think every month in case if you want to sit with the team and evaluate performance based upon what you said in the beginning of the year i think it's it's pretty pretty good and 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 last two things are on behavior absolutely fundamental for any organization success and and the more we talk about it the lesser it is because that's what define you that's what define the organization is so bring that into the forefront rather than theek hai yaar you have accomplished so put it why don't we put it as a part of in case if again to to reiterate if those behaviors are measurable put it into a part of the objective so that consciously you are working in terms of making that impact so lastly i think i don't we should not forget the purpose the purpose of our healthcare company and i believe most of the people are from the healthcare but uh, but if not then pardon me because i am going to say something purpose of us for the entire industry is to to ensure that we serve patients so please keep that purpose and the outcome in between is what the performance is all about i mean you have a purpose and then you have a outcome and then you put all those matrices and let's continue to also uh, uh, maybe another topic around which we i'm sure you would you would be interested in how do you continuously update i mean world is changing so fast not only from a technology regulatory i mean environmentally Uh, even in moving inside a account i think so so how do you continue to upgrade yourself and what can we do i think that's another message because i think rapid changes are something that we must continue to also witness yeah oh uh, so thank you very much amit i really uh, salute your spirit in spite of all your illness and i i, I mean it doesn't reflected even for a single <laughs> second that you are not well and i really appreciate that thank you so much for your time i know that uh, it's always busy for all of us but thank you so much for being here and to all the audience uh, if you have any questions you are on linkedin live you can write on the linkedin amit will respond to you also this video we are going to record and put it on 
our YouTube channel, you can always visit that place and, and re-look re at it, everything. You can write it on the comment section. How did you like it? And any questions, I will pass it on to Amit and we'll look forward for a response from him. And for all of you, uh, one very important announcement that I want to make in the end, that next leader's talk is going to be a little different. We are going to celebrate the uh, spirit of women, that is Women's Day, which is coming on 8th of March. And uh, we have planned an event on 7th of March evening, uh, but this is not going to be LinkedIn live event. This is going to be a close event. Uh, what is the theme that we are using is that we are going to touch on the life of a wo working woman in a corporate world, those who are in their 20s, 30s, 40s, and 50s. And our panel is ready. We are going to unleash that panel tomorrow. And we also want, this is going to be a paid event. Uh, and the idea is of this paying is that whatever money that we are going to generate out of it is going for a charity, which is supporting the woman cause. So I want you to generally wow. come forward. Amit, I also request you to share it with your organization. Sure. With your own people, And uh, soon it will be published tomorrow morning. Wow. Thank you very, very much. Well done. Congrats. Thank you. Thank you, Amit. Thank you once again for being here. And good night. Bye-bye. Good night to all. Bye-bye. Thanks, Arun. Thanks.